the weather and the climate. Dane, please go on with what you were saying before the break. Thank you, Maria. Important distinction that the publicized weather modification programs, which are generally single engine propeller driven airplanes with a few flares on the wings, those programs are designed to confuse the public as to what climate engineering actually is. They're used as a as a smoke screen, if you will, to, to mass climate engineering from the population. So the bottom line is very big difference distinction between the known weather modification, which is cloud seeding, very small scale, meaningless against the backdrop of the climate intervention operations, which our precipitation tests have extrapolated the amount of material being dumped into the skies annually from geoengineering jet aircraft to be somewhere in the range of 40 to 60 million tons of nanoparticles dumped into our skies. And again, this is creating conditions, Maria, like you see on almost every storm now in the US, you have massive hail. And that's indicative of climate engineering operations with chemical ice nucleating elements. They can create surface flash freezes, but this is damaging crops as well. Uh, again, the degree to which the planet's life support systems are being disrupted by climate engineering, aka weather warfare, let's call it what it is, it can't be overstated. Absolutely. Now, I want to ask you about these the, the, the nanoparticles that have been dumped into the air. We're hearing a lot about nanotechnology, nanoparticles. I've previously asked you the questions, you know, do these nanoparticles cre uh, uh, contain technology? You said um, you've released a documentary, Graphene Skies. This is something that is being sprayed. Talk to us about the difference between what was contained in nanoparticles back then and now. Have we got an analysis on that? Well, we do know the, the primary elements, aluminum, barium, strontium, manganese, polymer fibers, surfactants, which are what makes soap soap. If people have seen foaming rain, that is indicative of surfactants being seeded. It keeps these particles from sticking together, but also graphene. So in the case of graphene and polymer fibers, we know that those two elements are used militarily for biological warfare as biological carrier agents. It means it can carry a pathogen from the cloud to the ground. Why are these elements in our rain? And they absolutely are. Our last 100 lab tests almost all contain graphene. So again, the, the gravity what's folding in our, unfolding in our skies being waged on populations without their knowledge or consent can't be overstated. It's not just weather warfare, but at this point must be considered also a form of biological warfare as well. And here's my question, Maria. When the power structure feels that they are completely back into a corner, Will they level the playing field by dispersing something much more devastating, like a hemorrhagic fever, Ebola, Marburg? Would they use these biological carrier platforms that are already being sprayed into our skies to carry that type of pathogen from the cloud to the ground? I think we would be very naive to think they wouldn't. Well, I want to ask you about that because I did listen to a couple of your recent updates where you were talking about pathogens. Is it possible? to spray something like hemorrhagic fever or something that would trigger hemorrhagic fever in the skies. And I want to add here that from people like Todd Callender and, and his um, team, Lisa McGee, they found uh, that within the shots, and I've had Todd on this broadcast before, within the shots, there is programmable technology that can actually uh, create these symptoms uh, remotely even uh, that was in the COVID injections. Now we're finding that this is, you know, this similar technology is being found in food, in the air, in the water, everywhere. Uh, so is are we talking about pro programmable technology in the skies as well um, and part biological, part technological pathogens being sprayed in the air? In regard to anything in those categories, I, I, I would not want to speak about what we can't know, but what we can know is bad enough. What we do know is more than dire enough to call this an existential threat. So again, when we know we have the world's second most recognized climate engineer, Dr. Ken Caldera, former Department of Defense scientist, we have an audio of him on the record stating what he did for the US Department of Defense was to design ways of spraying pathogens into clouds to infect the populations below. He now works for Bill Gates, by the way, but when we know this technology is actively sought, pursued, refined from the US Department of Defense, why would we think they're not going to use this on US populations when we know as of 1977, according to the Washington Post, the US military had conducted at least 239 open air biological tests on innocent, unknowing US populations. So the bottom line is, they would use this certainly based on their past history to level the playing field. They have the technology to do it. The spraying operations are already in place. The elements used to carry these pathogens from the clouds to the ground are already in the mix. 
And even without these other pathogens, all these particles is certainly 230 the elements are by past his the ground. So the bottom you to do it on in his pathogens. Mine is the mix based on their pathogens from the elements and unknowing. Carry these pathogens at least 230. All so the bottom is on in his ground. Pathogens at least the elements least two. That's on in his.